Hey, this is Andrew Abyss. How are you doing? I uh, wanted to tell you about a Facebook post. Uh, one of my friends in Tokyo, uh, he lives there. My friend lives there with his Japanese wife and young child. She's about two or three years old. So uh, less, yesterday they posted um, uh, this. Uh, last week, we were devastated to learn that uh, our daughter uh, has been diagnosed with uh, restrictive cardiomyopathy. She will require a heart transplant. We are leaving Japan and um, we're going to Boston for, to administer treatment for her. Please uh, keep us in your thoughts and prayers. So, um, you know, this is, it's just got to be the um, CCM 137. Uh, that's, um, that is in Tokyo. Uh, Dr. Chris Busby has talked about this uh, Chernobyl heart, predicting that, um, extrapolating that uh, this will uh, be the result in Tokyo and uh, it's come very, at a must, much faster pace it seems this is just two years out so I, I you know I just I try to post as much as I can without being uh, without sort of uh, harassing people my harassing my Facebook friends but um, yeah this is that's what it is it's, it's got to be uh, restrictive cardiomyopathy is the uh, the heart ventricles uh, becoming too rigid or or weak, wherein they cannot uh, um, pump blood properly. Uh, you know, get the volume of blood through the uh, through around the body, so blood gets backed up in the circulatory circulatory system, trying to get in the heart uh, because the heart's not pumping it out fast enough, and eventually leads to a heart failure and uh, and death, of course. So, uh, yeah, it's just tragic uh, that this that child, the children in Tokyo, they need to be out of there completely so uh, you know uh, we tell people as much as we can but this is the result this is the uh, plausible deniability and uh, of um, the nuclear industry that um, that uh, that this uh, that radiation was ever a cause of um, of uh, these ailments now restrictive I looked on some US government medical website um, restrictive cardiomyopathy is uh, is uh, quote unquote not known as to what the cause is. It is not known, especially with in regards to children. So I mean, you and I know. I mean, this is what uh, this is what's causing it. Uh, you know, you're living 200 kilometers from three reactor meltdowns with MOX fuel and cesium. You know that this. I don't understand why why they they were there. Uh, they they needed to be out of there two years ago. But uh, this is the uh, the result, I guess. Uh, uh, so you're watching, you're witnessing, or we are witnessing a, a yeah, the health time bomb uh, disaster unfold in real time. You know, it's not like there's a documentary that comes out uh, 10, 20 years later on the BBC and, and we all say, oh, yes, I guess it was the radiation. Uh, you know, pity that um, so many people had to die needlessly. So uh, you have their daughter. Um, let's hope that uh, you know they have successful operations, but uh, it's it's not going to be bode well for the rest of her life. Uh, um, no matter how positive uh, you know uh, we think about it, um, the positive thing is to to evacuate Tokyo. It's uh, it's um, distressing for me to think of the uh, evacuating Tokyo, but that's what needs to be done. And you know, North Japan. So I hope you're all well, um, take care, and uh, let's tell it like it is. I'm Christopher Busby, I'm a, a, an expert on the health effects of ionizing radiation, and I want to talk to you about um, Fukushima and Chernobyl. Um, what I want to say is, about, uh, is, is, to, is that uh, the, the models that are used to determine the effects of radiation always concentrate on cancer and leukemia. And so the current risk model will say how many cancers are expected after Fukushima and how many cancers were expected after Chernobyl and so forth. But we know from Chernobyl that radiation causes a whole range of diseases and, and one of the diseases that it seems to cause is heart disease. I want to talk to you about heart disease effects in children. Now a colleague of mine, Professor Yuri Bandashevsky, uh, became quite famous um, because he studied the effects of cesium-137 exposure to children in the areas that were contaminated by um, 
by the Chernobyl accident in Belarus. Uh, he discovered uh, in the late 90s, he discovered um, that the children who were contaminated to the extent of having a, only 20 to 30 becquerels per kilogram, which is not very much, of cesium-137, were suffering cardiac arrhythmias, that, that that's, uh, the, the heart wasn't, wasn't beating properly, um, and they were suffering heart attacks and dying. And it's a very serious matter. So it wasn't a question of leukemia and cancer in these children, although that occurred as well, but there were very high rates of heart disease in these children. So the children were manifesting um, heart diseases which are normally only found in old people. There were, about, there were about 3 billion muscle cells in a child's heart, so this is a number, 3 billion. And what we can do is we can put 50 becquerels per kilogram of cesium in a thought experiment, we can put it into this heart muscle, and a becquerel uh, is one disintegration per second. So we can see how many disintegrations, uh, that's how many electron tracks uh, come from, from this cesium-137 in a period of about a year. And when we do this sum, and it's really simple, it can be done on the back of an envelope, what we find is that there are many, many more electron tracks tra traversing the cells than you can imagine. And in fact, it works out that if only 1% of those cells were, were killed by the electron tracks from that level of cesium-137. If only 1% were killed, you would lose 25% of all the muscle cells in the heart. And this is very serious because the heart is an extraordinary organ. The muscle cells in the heart are autonomous. They just contract and they contract and they contract for the whole period of the life of the individual. And every day they pump 7,000 litres of blood through the body. Truly extraordinary. And we live for 70 years. So this heart beats away continuously for the whole of your lifespan. But of course these cells are non-replaceable by and large. It turns out that, that, that only 1% of these cells can be replaced in a year. So if these cells get damaged, or if a particular number of these cells get damaged, they cannot be replaced in a short period of time. So, so a year's exposure to 50 becquerels per kilogram of cesium-137 and incidentally, uh, cesium-137, we know from experiments, binds to muscle. So this is where it goes. Just like iodine goes into the thyroid gland and strontium goes into the bone and it goes to the DNA, cesium-137 goes to muscle. So it will concentrate in the muscle tissue of the heart. So this child's heart, after one year of, of, of exposure to that level of cesium, which is quite a small level, will have approximately 25% of its cells destroyed. Now, we would therefore expect to find effects, and the same effects that were found by Bandashevsky. And it does seem, from, from what people have been telling me about children in, in the Fukushima-affected area, that they are actually suffering heart attacks. Yes. And if, if, yes, and, the, and of course, if any of them are suffering from these problems, they should be immediately evacuated. But if they, any of them are suffering from these problems, then all of the children should be evacuated, because it means that there will be subclinical effects from this cesium-137 in heart muscle. And it will not be repaired. Heart cannot be repaired. Heart tissue cannot be repaired. These children will suffer for the whole of their life and will die young. Which brings me to the second point. The second point is this, is that if you die from heart attack or heart disease, you will not die from cancer. Because cancer is essentially a disease of old, pe old people. So you get genetic damage and it goes on and on and on. Eventually you get cancer. By and large, what happens is that the cancer rates go up very sharply as you get old. But I can tell you this, that the heart disease effects go up very much more quickly. So what you will find in areas like Fukushima that are contaminated with these radionuclides is not necessarily an enormous increase in cancer. There will be an increase in cancer, but you will find a big increase in heart disease. And actually, what we look, when we look at Belarus, we find both of those things. We find an increase in cancer, but we find a big increase in heart disease, an enormous increase in heart disease. And as a result of this, the demogra demographic index of the Republic of Belarus has fallen sharply after the Chernobyl accident, and now has gone into negative replacement. So in fact, if it goes on like this, the, the, the population of Belarus will disappear. And this is what we will expect to see in Fukushima. So I'm warning you all now to start looking out for heart disease, heart attacks, and keep getting the children out of there quickly.